I live in Limburg. That is the most southern province of the Netherlands. I'm 20 years old and all my life I've been wanting to work as a caretaker for people with a disability. Just a few months ago, my dream came true. And now I work as a full-time caretaker at a living facility in Maastricht. At this facility, my story takes place. The living facility is positioned just outside of Maastricht city. Before the building became a housing facility, it was a laundromat for the people living on that street. The facility consists of three houses that are internally connected. Each one can house eight people. That makes a total of 24 patients that live in the facility. Each patient has his or her own room, ranging from small to large to a separate bathroom and kitchen to a shared bathroom in the hallway. I first began working at this facility when I was just 17 years old, as an intern for my education. The story starts two years ago, when one of my patients that had lived there for three years moved out to live at another facility. His family claimed that the patient did not feel safe in his room, because he would hear knocking coming from his closet. We made our apologies for the inconvenience, but didn't think much of it. One month later, when the room was cleaned and disinfected, a new patient came to live in the empty room. It was an elderly man, who I'll just refer to as Rick. Rick was a warm and kind-hearted man, who always loved talking about horses that he had as a child, as well as his great love for Russian opera. You'd always catch him sneaking into the kitchen to get a snack, or hear him sing opera. I must admit, he had quite a powerful and wonderful voice. At first, he would bid us a good night before he went to bed. But as time went by, Rick seemed more and more distressed. He didn't eat and didn't drink as much as he used to, and he lost weight at a troubling rate. He would sit quietly on the couch, staring blankly at nothing. When asked what was wrong, he would say that he had a terrible nightmare of some kind of creature lurking in his closet. My colleagues and I debated whether or not he could be getting Alzheimer's and would need testing for it. He had been tested, but nothing came out of those tests. Every night, Rick would scream us awake, and when we came into the room, he'd be sitting on his bed, trembling and pointing at the closet. He'd say that something crawled out of the closet and joined him in his bed. He described this creature as being skinny, even bony, with rotting meat hanging from its bones. The creature had green eyes, the same color as his deceased mother, and huge fingers that ended in claws. The creature's face was that of a human skull, those green eyes being nothing more than small lights, and a mouth that was filled with sharp teeth, like a crocodile. The creature would lie next to him in his bed, wrapping its claws around his body. Rick described so vividly how he could smell the horrible scent of decay as the creature opened his mouth to whisper in his ear, Get out! This is not your home! Rick would cover his ears as he said that, and he would soil himself. Poor Rick. My colleague checked the closet, but there was nothing there, and the only thing we could say was that everything was going to be fine. Fast forward about a month later, and Rick would wake up with markings all over his body. Deep scratches that appeared to be claw marks. There were even bite marks that were deeper and more animalistic than any human bite. Rick would not want to go into his room anymore, and he would bring his dinner to his room and place it at the door of his closet. My colleagues would take the food away, much to Rick's horror. He'd say that we would make the creature angry, and if it was angry, it would punish him. I feel so sorry for him especially seeing the fear in his eyes as we scolded him and took away the plate. There was two weeks of this, the same thing happening with Rick. One of my closest colleagues and I were working the night shift one night. We were making our usual rounds, checking if everyone was sleeping and all the machinery was still up and running. 
That was when we heard a horrible, bone-chilling scream echo through the building. The scream came from Rick's room. We stormed in, throwing the door open hard, revealing a horrible sight. Rick was lying on his back in his bed while he was grasping for air. He was clawing at his neck and chest, ripping the flesh off, making bloody gashes all over his upper body. His bed and himself were covered in blood, and there was a trace of blood leading to his closet, which was now slightly opened. My colleagues dialed 112. That's the emergency line in the Netherlands. While I desperately tried to stop Rick from clawing, the only thing Rick did was scream, as if possessed, and stared at the ceiling. After what seemed like forever, the ambulance came and took Rick away. A week later, we received the sad news that Rick had died. The room once again was left empty. The blood was cleaned up by a cleaning company and the room would be occupied soon enough. But even before the room was occupied, I found another patient standing in the room in front of that closet. Hey, what are you doing in here? I asked her as I walked into the room. The patient had stared at me and had muttered, This room should not be occupied ever again. It is angering him. Uh, who's him? I asked with a shaky voice. You know who I mean. The devil who lived in the closet. After she said that, she walked out of the room and left me breathless. Two weeks later, that same patient moved into the room. I don't know why she was placed in that room, but I do know that she too changed. She can't remember her own name now, and all she does is sit in front of that closet, talking to the devil. I don't know what's going on at my work, but strange things keep happening. Colleagues tell stories of hearing footsteps in the hallways, Others hear whispers in the garden, and one even claimed to have been attacked by a shadow demon. Whatever's going on, one thing is for sure. The creature in the closet is real, and he's not happy about our patient living in his room.